Okay, you're right. Welcome back to another video. And today we're going in reverse to what we did last time. So last time we had a pattern, we made a table, we made a rule, and then made a graph. Now this time we've got a graph. We're going to make a table and then find the rule. Okay, so what we need to do here, you can see this graph shows the relationship between the number of shapes in a matchstick pattern and the number of matches for a match, particular matchstick pattern. Okay, and we need to construct a table of data to start off. So the way I'm going to draw this table, we're going to have an X row, we're going to have a Y row, and there we have a table. Okay, we start at one, and you can see there's a point for every sort of value of x here. So we can just go one, two, three, four, and how many points do we have? We go up to five. Five. Okay, now to finish up our table, we just need to put in the corresponding y value or vertical part of each of these points that are on our graph. So if we go up for x is 1, the y value of that point is 5. So in our table, we just write that underneath in the y row as such. Uh, we can also then uh, do the rest for the same. So here for 2, it's going to be 8. For 3, it's going to be 11. You can see it's halfway between the 10 and 12 there. Uh, for 4, it's going to be 14. And for five, it's going to be 17. Okay, so that is part A. We created a table here. Now, this lesson, I'm going to show you a really quick way that you can convert a table of values into a rule uh, written as an algebraic equation. Okay, now you can do this really quickly when you know that it's a linear relationship. That is, you could draw a line, a straight line between all the points. Now we know that we can do this in this example, um, a straight line. If it's a curved line, then this quick way doesn't work. So it, you need to make sure that it's a straight line that you're looking at. Okay, so we can see here with our x values, they're each going up by one each time as such. One, one, one for all of those ones. And for our y values, they're each going up by three. Okay, et cetera, et cetera. Each one, there's a gap of three between them. Now that is going to be important later on. And um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find uh, what is the relationship between these points. Now, if you look at the first point, one and five, you can see, well, okay, it could be five times x. So y is five times x. But that doesn't work for our next point. Two times five is not eight. And three times five is not 11. Um, so we could try something else. Maybe it's 4 times x plus 1, but you can see that's also not going to work. 2 times 4 plus 1 doesn't equal 8, nor does it 3 times 4 plus 1 equal 11. So you've got to kind of think, well, how do I know how many times I'm going to multiply x, and then what am I going to add, or what am I going to subtract um, to find my algebraic rule? And the key is, okay, if this is going up by 1, and this is going up by 3, then the multiplication factor is going to be three. Okay, in our rule, it's going to be three times x plus something. Okay, and I know that because the difference between each one, the y values, is three. Okay, later on, we're going to be talking about as the slope of a line or the gradient. But for now, we're just going to look at these tables. Okay, so let's see how does that work. If I multiply x by three, Okay, uh, for one, I get three. How many more do I need to get five? Well, I have to add two. So if I times the x by three and then add two, let's see if that works for the next value. Times two by three, you get six. Add two, you get eight. Okay, it works. Let's see if this continues. Times three by three and then add two, you get 11. So it seems to be working for each of these values here. So we are on to something. We have found the rule that links x and y. Okay, so our rule would be y is 
just three times x or three x plus two. Let's just go over again how we work it out. You're going to have some kind of multiplication factor where you're multiplying x by a number, and then you're going to either add something on or take something away to sort of uh, align it properly. So we knew it couldn't be times by five or times by four. Um, the multiplication factor is going to be the same as the difference between uh, each of the y values here. Okay, so it's going to be 3x plus something. And then to make sure it worked for each, we had to add two. And then you can just check your answer once you've done that. Okay, so the quick way, find the difference between the x's, find the difference between the y's, and that difference here will give you your multiplication factor in front of the x so that you can create this rule. Okay, now if you have any questions, remember contact me in Microsoft Teams. Good luck with the questions today, and I'll see you in the next video.